The whole point of meditation and attending teachings is to change our fundamental attitude. Let me repeat, that's a summarization. The whole point of attending meditations or doing your sadhana or doing prayers or doing dharma work or doing dharma activity or being part of the committee, the whole point of that is to change your fundamental attitude. Not a manifestation of that, at, not manifestation of that attitude, but a fundamental change. A manifestation of the attitude and a fundamental change is very different. A manifestation is you just pretend to be nice. You just pretend to be patient. You pretend to be compassionate. You just hold yourself till someone steps on your toes and you lash out at them. Oh, yes. But if you attend teachings and practice and your meditations and sadhanas and commitments correctly, which is to apply it to yourself, you will see a fundamental change in your attitude. Whatever you do remains the same, but the fundamentals change. When the fundamentals change, it will be different. That's why when, I, when, when a normal person like myself scolds people, I can make enemies. If my high gurus like Saramji scolds people, he will transform their mind. So do we have that power of scolding? To transform people's minds? To plant seeds of dharma in their mind? If we're very advanced, we can visualize ourselves as Yamataka or Hiruka and shout at a person and scream at a person and will plant seeds of enlightenment in their mind. No one will know. You'll see that person as a normal person shouting. They'll see it as you shouting and they'll be very angry. They probably hate you for the rest of their lives, but you planted Yamataka's blessing in them. Many ways people don't understand. So people look, oh, that guru is so fierce, shout like that. Uh, people are very judgmental. They know nothing. They have no knowledge. High lamas can manifest themselves as a yidam and shout and clear obstacles. How do you know there are high lamas who can shout at spirits and make them go away by shouting, get out! The spirit will run. Immediately. They don't need pujas. They don't need rituals. They can even burn their hair. They can send their hair to that place, and when they burn that hair, the smell of that lama will be there. The spirit will run. Why? They know who the lama is. Oh, they are very accomplished beings like that. You trust me. You don't think everybody's like you and me, clowns. Go to a Taoist master, put fools here, wear pendants, wear chakras, wear vajuginis, buy another chakra, buy another book, do pujas, black tea, protect me, protect me. After the puja, the black tea, the chakras, you still see the guy with no head standing there. <laughs> think about it. Yeah, some of us do all kinds of meditation. When they wake up in the meditation, all the other monsters are sitting there going, and they're like, uh oh. And some even do wrathful pujas, you know? They do wrathful pujas, and the spirits of pujas do a wrathful puja back. They drive car. Oh, yeah. Don't be so presumptuous. But highly attained beings, not necessarily lamas, not necessarily men, women, not necessarily even Tibetan, highly accomplished beings can take even their hair and burn it at a place, and those spirits will run. Oh, they will. You burn it. Highly accomplished beings. You can even go to the spirit and say your lama's name. My lama's blah blah Rinpoche, you go away. They will go away by the power of your lama. But you need to have your lama's permission. You can't simply just say, hey, Tenrinchi told you to get lost. <laughs> That's it, me and you in big trouble. That ghost will be very busy at night visiting me and you. What did you say, Tamarin Oh, 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 I was just kidding. Please don't cut my head off. Yeah. But if your lama is accomplished and he tells you, tell the spirit that Tamarin said, get lost. Then you go and tell him, um, excuse me, Mr. No Head. And the ghost will be like, Rrr. he'll be like, um, Rinpoche said, oh, Tam Rinpoche said, vamos, out. Go away. Then he'd be like, oh, Tenrimji, uh oh. They say, well, who the heck is Tenrimji? <laughs> then he uses his third eye, which is not on head, no head here. <laughs> so he clairvoyantly looks at, at, at your guru, and your guru is a clown. He says, you're going to get it now. But if he clairvoyantly looks at your guru, and your guru is Yamantaka, or Hiruka, or Vajugini, the spirits say, oh. So if you're not highly realized, the best thing is when you have problems like that, you meditate on compassion. You think about their rebirth. You think about why they became a spirit. You think about how they're suffering from loneliness and cold and from lack of nutrition and food and drinks and they're thirsty and they have to wander like that for hundreds of years. You immediately make an offering of incense to the Buddhas to them and you pray for them immediately. You don't try to do all kinds of weird supernatural meditations because once they enter into you, that's it. 
You don't want to do some meditation on the smakra, you know? You open up your chakra, open, and then the guy goes in and close, and you're like, oh dear. And they can't enter. They can enter through your chakra here. They can enter through 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 there. They can enter. They got many entrances they can enter. And once they enter, you're going to have a friend for life. Then you go to Rimchi, help. Rimchi's tell you, I can't help. <laughs> well, it's too late. It's too late, what? Once you break your arm, don't ask me for a chakra for protection from accidents. Hey, I broke my arm. Can I have a chakra protect me? I'm broken. Get lost. What to do? So once it ent when the spirit enters through you, maybe through your tongue or something, oh, oh. <laughs> then you got to be very careful. Can you see you at some nice Dharma wedding party licking people? <laughs> <laughs> I got more than I licked for. Just think about that. Scary, huh? I didn't hear about people, spirits entering through the tongue, but let's make it up. Imagine you go home and your tongue's possessed. Hi, mom. Hi, pop. Hi, Mr. Policeman. Oh. <laughs> Can you imagine your tongue gets possessed? You become licky, licky ghost. Just think about that. Then I'd get a picture of JP and Om, 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 Licky, Licky, Hong Pei, protect me. And then you go, because then, you know, it enters you deeper. Yeah. Isn't that exciting? Don't you like that? A Licky, Licky ghost. So, my point is when you change, when you attend Dharma, you do Dharma, you do Dharma work, you write, you teach, you, you, you write, you teach, you clean, you, you set up offerings, you attend to your Lama, or you print books. Whatever Dharma work you do is wonderful but it has to lead to fundamental change. And what's that fundamental change? You attack your fears and you expose it. Stop attacking other people and stop protecting your fears. You've got to stop protecting your fears. Why do you got to stop protecting your fears? It's not helping you. And the reason you attack other people is because you want to be happy. Actually, when we criticize and scold and yell at people, we actually want to be happy, because we're sending a message, don't say that about me, don't hit that deep point about me. But you see, we're attacking the wrong people. We're attacking the wrong people all the time. That's why it's more, better to be kind. It's better to be forgiving. And if we work for our Lama, it's very important to have a fundamental change. Don't offer service and money and, and all these things in exchange for attainments. That's not what your Lama's looking for. Don't make a delicious sandwich with it for, with it for your llama, but you yourself is still selfish. Don't. Make a sandwich and offer your selfishness up. How do you offer it up? How do you offer selfishness to your llama? By transforming your mind, a fundamental change. That's why we do all these classes. I am giving you knowledge on what, is, what you can do to improve everything in your life and everything around you. And I promise you, Everything in your life and everything around you will improve if you say, if you do what I have shared with you. Because I didn't make any of this up. I never make up teachings. Do you know why? I'm all over the internet. I'm all over the world. I don't want to misrepresent my guru, my abbot, my lamas. I wouldn't want to misrepresent his holiness ever. No. But I'm not worried about misrepresentation. I don't want to hurt your spiritual minds. If I make you practice things that damage you, you're damaged for life. I can't do that. Never. I will never do that. Never. I don't get anything out of it. It'd be nicer if I tell you nice things and real things and real practice. Then at least I get an ang bao wat. Right? If I tell you lies and crap and, and things that are not true, you're not going to give me an ang bao somewhere. You throw the oranges at me. Gong si fa cha ka yang bao. Yeah. So why would I want that? I want money. I want praise. I want nice thrones. I want nice food. I want respect. I want love. I want you to call me His Holiness, His Eminence, His Magnificence. So how am I going to do that? By being nice and teaching you the Dharma and teaching you the Dharma that's real. Because some of you in this room look pretty stupid. <laughs> You're kind of like, pretty stupid. But you know what? You won't remain stupid. Because you will learn and learn and learn. 